Hello everyone, welcome back to our BGP hands-on series. In this demonstration, we will go ahead and take a look at another important concept of BGP, which is simply called as BGP route propagation. We'll learn how the route propagation works and with the help of this particular demonstration, we will really see the how the BGP routes gets propagated different, between different autonomous system or AS system. And for this demonstration, we are using a slightly different topology. So let me bring up our topology that we plan to use. So this is the topology that we will be using. And in this topology, you could see that we have, there are three AS. There's an AS100, there's an AS1, and there's an AS300. And within the AS1, we have a couple more routers. And we would see what, what, why do we really need for the full mesh within autonomous system. So these red lines are really indicating that, you know, okay, we have an EVGP. So there is an EVGP session between AS100 and AS1. Similarly, we have an EVGP session between AS1 and AS300. Also, within these AS, we have an IVGP session between these, between these routers. And for the reachability, I'm also running an IGP. So the IGP that we are running is OSPF for end-to-end -end reachability. Uh, so this this is the topology that we plan to use and let me just show you some of the IP scheme, scheme that I'm using and to demonstrate some of the network we'll just stick with our way of configuring the loopback interfaces and we'll go ahead and advertise those respective loopback interfaces. So this is the IP scheme that we plan to use. So within the ISP1 we have a couple of the loopback interfaces configured. Similarly, on the AS300, we have some of the loopback interfaces configured. Within the AS1, uh, we are using a couple of the networks. Between router R1 and R3, we have 30 network. Between 1 and 2, we have 12 network. Between 2 and 4, we have 24. Between 3 and 4, we have 34. And you can see these are the different. The link between your AS100 and AS1 has an IP address of 116.11.0, ISP1 being .11 and RAR R1 being .1. Similarly, RAR R4 within the AS1 has an IP address of 172.16.34.4 and in AS300, the IP address ends with .34. So you can go ahead and you know take a screenshot of this topology while we work through uh, this particular lab. And so first of all, now if you keep an eye, you know, we would be taking a route that would be propagating from ISP1 via AS1 to the uh, BGP AS300. So this will be our uh, flow of these route propagation from ISP1 towards your ISP3 in this particular uh, topology. So ISP1 again under AS100 and ISP3 is in your AS300. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at our router ISP1 to start off. So just to show uh, show on this particular router, we can do simply show IP BGP, and you could see there are some routes uh, present here. Now, we can also take a look at some of our local routes, as we, I had shown you guys earlier, that there are quite a few loopbacks that we have configured. And now, if you take a look at, there are quite a few loopback again, you know, these are being denoted by these different code L, which really stands for these local. So this is one of the local IP that has been configured on this loopback one. And that constitutes a connected route of 10.0.1.0 slash 28. And you can see this is the connected route on our loopback one. Similarly, for loopback two, we have a connected route of 10.0.1.16 slash 28. And, and so on. So there are quite a few uh, routes which are present on the ISP1. Now we can also take a look at our BGP configuration here on the ISP1. So we can take a look at the section BGP. So standard stuff. So we have a BGP. And then these are the couple networks that we are advertising. And I'm sure if you recall from the previous lab, the way we are writing the network and the mask, it is really the way of configuring the classless BGP that you guys have seen earlier. And then this line really indicates that, okay, hey, we have an EBGP session with our AS1 and within the AS1, the router R1. So that was the IP address on router R1's interface, which is connected with the ISP1 router. So now we have an IBGP, sorry, we have an EBGP uh, relationship between ISP1 and router R1 in AS1. 
Now with that, now we just went ahead and verified that, okay, hey, this is the route. Now we can also confirm that, okay, hey, this route, whether it is present into the BGP table or not. So for that, the command is, as all of you are familiar, show IP BGP. And when we run the show IP BGP, we definitely have a couple of those things. And let's take a look at this one of the route that we would use for our tracking. So let's pick the first route. 10.0.1.0 and again if you take a look at the next hop being 0.0.0.0 so that would really indicate that this 10.0.1.0 route is a locally originated because again the next hop is being set as 0. Also there is another way to verify if it's a locally originated route or not. If you take a look at this path column here now, if I just point you to the last route here, quickly take a look at, it says, okay, here we have an origin code of I, which again stands for IGP. But if you take a look at three here, 300, 300 is really the AS number. So in this case, for this particular route, we do not have any AS number. So the AS path attribute is the empty here. So we do not have an AS path attribute. So that is also another way to verify whether this is a locally originated route or are we learning this route from some remote neighbor. So you can see the ISP1 had this route in its routing table and this route is also present in our VGP table. And we just saw, we have seen here that this ISP1 router has an eVGP relationship with AS1 and with AS1 that is with the router R1. Now we can go to our router R1 and we can take a look at, do we see this particular route coming from ISP1 or not. So now let's go ahead and uh, jump to our router R1, which is connected with this ISP1 router. So again, just as I indicated earlier, that within the AS1, all of these router R1, R2, R3, R4, they have an IBGP in a relationship. And that you could see here that this is the neighbor with the remote AS of one. And my local AS is one that indicates, you know, that this is an IBGP relationship. So RAR R1 has an IVGP relationship with the rest of the three router in AS1, dot 17, dot 33, and dot 49. The router R1 also happens to have an EVGP relationship in remote AS100, and remote AS100 belongs to our ISP RAR R1, and the IP address for that interface on ISP1 ends with a dot 11. Now, if everything is good, we saw that the ISP1 was advertising a subnet, and that route was also present in the BGP table and if the BGP or the EVGP between R1 and ISP1 is working correctly we should be able to see that particular route of 10.0.1.0 slash 28 coming from our ISP1 router so we can go ahead and verify that by taking a look at again our BGP routing table on R1 because R1 is the neighbor with ISP1 to start off. Now if you go ahead and scroll down here, we could really see that here, this is the MP. That kind of signifies here that, okay, hey, 10.0.1.0 slash 28 is the route. And if you take a look at the next stop is really 170.16.11.11. .11. And if you see from this neighbor statement in the BGP, this 11.11 .11 is the IP address of the interface, which is sitting on your ISP1 router. So what this this network says, okay, if somebody wants to reach this particular network, this would be the next hop that they need to send the packet. Now, also you can see now the AS path attribute also got populated, really indicating that, okay, hey, we are learning this particular uh, route from AS100. And as it crosses more AS, it will go ahead and start to add all those AS numbers into this particular list. Well, we could see from this statement that, okay, hey, now router R1 sees this particular route and it says if somebody wants to reach this route the next hop ip address is really 172.16.11.11 now we also notice that the router r4 router r4 is also in as1 uh, and router r4 had an ebgp session with our isp3 now let's take a look at on router r4 and then see are we seeing this particular route on the router r4 or not but before I jump ahead, if you take a look at, you know, pay attention to the very first column. Right now here it says star and greater than symbol. So star really indicates, okay, it's a valid route and greater than symbol indicates a best route. So right now it is a valid and a best route. And if somebody wants to reach this particular network, 
this would be the next hop so this is the best way to reach this particular network we are will be this particular next hop and we do not have any other code in the first column so now let's go ahead and jump on to our r4 r4 is also in as1 and it has an ebgp session with our as300 now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the same entry and then see are those entries matching or is there any uh, thing different between what we see on our r1 versus our r4 so let's go to our r4 and again just to show you that earlier uh, we have an again ospf between these uh, between within the as1 for the igp for the reachability and we also have an ibgp relationship among these routers and again router r4 has an ebgp uh, session with the as300 here now we are interested in verifying our bgp table so i'll go ahead and simply say show ip bgp and the route that we were interested is this particular one 10 0 10 0 1 dot 10 0 1 dot 0 slash 28 and again if you see take a look at the next stop so the next stop is pretty much same so the next stop hasn't really change in this particular case and again we could see that based on the as path attribute okay so it is learning it is coming via or the as path attribute is 100 but the main important thing to pay attention here is now we have an extra added i and again the i really indicates that okay it's an internal so in this case the route 1001.0 has a next hop address which is set to 172.16.11.11 and also has an as path attribute of 100 but the router r4 has learned this route via the internal ibgp session so that's the main benefit being with the full mesh now all of these internal routers they will know about these via the internal bgp and we can go ahead and verify uh, that particular we can also go ahead and take a look at uh, something else here now this was present into the bgp table now we can take a look at our simple the route table so we can simply say show ip a route and now let's say if the route r4 needs to reach to this network first it needs it says okay hey, this is the next stop so that means we are interested in taking a look at that how the router r4 or what are the possible ways for the router r4 to reach this particular next hop so we can reach this particular network so we can simply go ahead and the show IP route command and then network we are interested in uh, looking for is 172.16.0.0 slash 16 or 172.16.11.0 slash 24 depending on whatever is configured and in our case it is configured as slash 24. So let's go ahead and run simply the show IP route command and now if you take a look at we are interested in 176.11 so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and if I just go ahead and pause here we could simply see that okay hey now the router r4 has learnt about this network 17611.0 via oo stands for again ospf so if i show it to you here uh, somewhere here let's go ahead and scroll up oh so the o really stands for an ospf route so this router r4 if need it needs to read this 172.16.11 and network it will use the ospf as our igp and again it says that okay, hey to read this network there are two potential paths and again if you could see that these are two equal you know load uh, load balance path so that means the router r4 could go ahead and make use of the interface towards 0 2 and the interface towards uh, 0 3 so these are the respective two routers r2 or r3 that means to reach this particular network uh, r4 is going to use the ospf route and it can go ahead and load balance so it will send some packets onto towards interface 2 and some of the packets towards interface number 3 here and that's how it is going to go ahead and reach this particular network or that ip address of 172.16.11.11 now if everything is good we could see that particular route was present into the bgp cable onto the r4 and now we are interested in taking a look at the route propagation we know that the router r4 has an ebgp neighbor relationship with the as300 if everything is good and if the bgp pairing is all up we should be able to see this particular route being seen on the as300 now before we jump to the as300 router take a look at here it clearly says the as path attribute shows that okay it is coming from the as100 now 
we are going to go to the AS300. Now the AS300 is connected to AS1, not directly with the AS100. Something to keep in mind with that, let's jump to our ISP3 router. And now let's just simply take a look at a showdown section BGP. Again, doesn't have a lot of things, just it is advertising some of those network again, the classless thing. But it has an eBGP session with 34.4 which is the R4 router in AS1. Now, if everything is good, let's go ahead and take a look at the BGP routing table and see if that particular route or the network 1001.0/28 or simply the IP prefix is, with the, is it present in our BGP routing table or not. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And here we could see that 1001.0/28. And now if you take a look at the next hop is 172.16.34.4 which is the IP address of the router R4 interface which is connected with the AS300 router. So it says okay hey, this is the best and valid path to reach this particular network. This will be the next stop that I'll be sending the traffic. So this is our router R4. The traffic would arrive on router R4 and then the router R4 you know will needs to look up its own table and everything. Now if you take a look at here we only had earlier on the router 4 the AS part only had the AS part 100, but now this particular route has also crossed AS1. So that is the reason now you see the 1 and 100. So it really indicates that, okay, hey, this particular route was originated in 100 and after that it has crossed the AS1 and that's how we are reaching. And if this router uh, ISP3 needs to reach this particular network or IP prefix, this is the next stop that it needs to send the IP and uh, need to send the traffic to this particular uh, stop. Uh, we could simply again you know uh, trace this whole thing with the help of you know the ping commands and other way uh, to use so we can simply say okay hey how are we reaching are we able to reach this particular subnet or not so i can go ahead and simply say thing 172 16 34.4 and we're going to think from our loopback one that is the interface we are using and we could see that the isp3 uh, has a successful reachability to R4. And now simply we can trace it back this path from R4 then to R1 and that's how we can go ahead and ensure that uh, the whole route propagation works. So hopefully you got idea with this small demonstration